Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we're going to do two birds with one stone. My number one office manager is down there packing orders. Say hello to the world. Hello! We've got a big food order for Fishman Aquatics. So we're going to go over there and deliver that. So if you want all your best aquarium adventures foods, check out Fishman Aquatics if you live in and around the Greater Manchester area. Or check out my website if you don't and I'll send it to you. But we're going to go over there, we're going to check out the new kiddie area, the kid friendly area, so as we can, because it's the Easter holidays here, so we'll check that out, see what it's like, check out their new social media features, play with some bunnies, drink some Capri Suns hopefully, and more importantly pick up some new fish. So, let's go! Yeah. So all that was about a week ago, we did a visit to Fishman Aquatics and got a few new fish, I'll show you them in a moment. Um, but we've got a few other updates that I can show you in the fish room. The shop itself, it's even had another update since I've been there, so I think they've had a reshuffle. There's loads of cool fish there, I'm not just saying that because we're friends, but it's well worth a visit if you're ever in the area. But as to what I got, let me, let me show you. In fact, let's start with the other updates in the fish room. First and foremost, need to check in on Humphrey. Yep, he's all right. Looking dashing as ever. But the big news in here is we have curtains. So people will know I built that wall there. In fact, I built this whole thing. But I stopped the wall there and I was considering putting in a door or some kind of solution here, another wall. And in the end, I've just gone with some thermal curtains. So I hung them up with a a great curtain job. There's some tidying up to do in this corner uh, and in this corner, but overall they're doing really well. They're keeping all the heat in here, so that's exactly what I want them to do. It still allows me to, because I can just open them up and if I do want to bring in a big tank or anything, it's easy enough. I don't have to worry about maneuvering around a the door. Then we've got all the tanks around here, obviously. And there's the other big news, is I now have a radiator in the fish room. So that is going to heat the room rather than me having to heat the tanks individually. Well, we're doing a bit of both. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of experimenting and just check and see which is the most efficient way to do this. All the tanks do currently still have heaters in them, so I just need to make sure um, that they are there as a fail safe and we can heat the room. I think it will mostly come into its own when we get mega tank going. Mega tank, as you can see, still sans glass. There's no glass yet. It's meant to be here on Thursday, it's now Sunday, it hasn't quite arrived yet. But hopefully that'll get here soon and then we'll all be sorted out. Um, but yeah, things are taking shape at last. In terms of the new fish, um, there are some things I got on my last visit and there are some things I can't remember if I've shown you or not from the visit before that. But we'll start with this tank. Here we've got some Precox rainbows. Um, I've always liked Precox rainbows, I just think they're fantastic. Um, a nice, easy, relatively hardy fish, in my experience, will get along with most um, 
tank mates. This is just a bit of a quarantine tank. This isn't going to be their, their full forever tank. Um, but I've already got some, so this is just adding to have a few more. And then over here, you might be able to see we've got a black ram. I did have a pair of these, but unfortunately the day after I put them in the tank, I found one of them floating. I don't quite know what happened, because this one's been fine ever since. But yeah, a bit of a shame. I've only got one now. But I bought these more as an interest piece. Everyone keeps going on about them, black rams. I mean, they're just plain rams that just happen to be black. So I'm not quite sure what all the fuss is about. So this is more a bit of a social experiment for me to see what is all the fuss around these black rams, midnight rams, dark night rams, all the different names. I mean, they're, they're cool, and in as much as it's a colour morph of a, a regular ram. I mean, you can see the regular ram markings and colourings underneath. They just happen to be extra black. But I do like rams, so can't complain. And then next to them, we've got two tanks full of African fish. So these are, again, quarantine tanks for the fish that are going to end up going in the subscriber tank. The subscriber tank, if you don't know what that is, join me on my Friday night live streams. Um, we did a little bit of a, not a competition, a poll to see what kind of fish we should keep. So all my viewers and subscribers chipped in. Everyone decided that we wanted to keep Congo tetras and build a biotope around that. So I had to find fish from the Congo, and that's where we've got these guys from. Um, I'll start with this tank, because these are especially cool. These are Alestes tetras, or sometimes, I found out the other night, called Diamond tetras. Um, at first glance, you're like, yep, it's just a fairly big sized tetra, but the more you look at them, the more you notice the markings, the subtle markings are really cool, the eyes, the way the light dances off the, the scales, the different shimmers that you get off the, the scales, um, really active, they're always swimming around, so I think these will look good in a big long tank. Um, yeah, really happy with these guys, I think they're fantastic. And really interesting, it's not something you see every day, um, Really active eaters as well, happily to go for just about everything you can throw at them. So I'm looking forward to seeing them in a, a Congo biotope. Next to them, we've got some more regular fare, um, some African butterfly fish. I mean, some of these we might be stretching the, the Congo biotope definition a little bit, but I'm going for, if someone has claimed that they've seen these in the Congo River, then we can have them. Um, I've always thought these are really cool little oddballs. Cool little oddball fish that kind of occupy, they just do this and they sit at the top of the tank. I've noticed that they will go and have a sleep in my java ball, java moss ball, but they spend 90% of their time just hanging around at the top of the tank. I suspect waiting to jump out when I least suspect it, so this tank has, a, has got a lid on it. Um, but yeah, again, fairly standard at first glance, but when you spend a little bit more time with them, they do tend to notice a bit of, oh well, yeah, they do have interesting colours and patterns and finage. But yeah, just cool, weird fish. So I've got a couple of them, and the other one over there. And then, under the java moss, no doubt. Let's see if we can tempt him out. I don't know if you saw that, but we've got a little dinosaur in there. Del Hazy Bicher. Um, or Ornate Bicher, I think, sometimes called. Again, another oddball, cool, just fascinating fish. The fact that these have been around longer than the dinosaurs, it just makes them super cool. Again, a really good eater, seems to be blind as a bat, that's my <laughs> my expert opinion, because he just kind of floats around the tank bashing into things until he goes, oh, that's some food. Um, doesn't seem to hunt or anything. I've had Senegal bitchers in the past and they have been quite very aggressive. This one does not seem to be the same, I'm sure it will be when he's a bit bigger. I mean, 
the general rule is don't keep them with anything that's can fit in their mouth because they will eat it, but that's true of most fish I've found. And then we've got the stars of the show, the Congo Tetras. So this is my second batch of Congo Tetras. Um, obviously, if you saw a video, a couple of videos back of my massive mistake of leaving the water running during a water change, I killed an entire tank of these, which I'm still pretty gutted about. But been back, picked up this group. Again, same sort of fantastic colours, fantastic movement. Love almost everything about these guys. I can't believe it's taken me so long to to come around to Congo's Tetras. I said in my live stream that I've had them before in the past and been kind of underwhelmed by them, but maybe it's just that I didn't keep them in big enough numbers. These guys are absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to have these in a big tank. So all these fish are essentially in quarantine tanks at the moment. My plan is to have a bigger tank on that rack. Either buy or well, I bought one now actually. That should be arriving soon, so that will go on that rack, um, and then make a dedicated scape and tank for the African biotope. So hopefully that will be coming soon. We'll get to see that. My plan is generally kind of trying to imitate a river, some woods, some rocks, quite dark, low light. Um, if you've got any suggestions for plants for a Congo biotope, get in touch because at the moment I'm kind of stuck with Anubias. <laughs> um, not sure what else to put in there so that will be going in there and coming in a future update I was thinking about using this tank so I've got this tank which used to be in my old office in my old house but it's a cube, it's like a three foot cube I just didn't think that fitted with the the river biotope kind of thing so we'll put something else in there I'm not sure what yet but we'll come up with some ideas not sure if I've mentioned them or not, but we have pea puffers again in the fish room. I don't think I'll ever get enough of these guys. Um, not from Fishman Aquatics, picked them up from Wentworth, my local garden centre. We have like a fish and aquatics section. But I love pea puffers. So I've got a nice big group of them. Um, I think I can't focus on them for toffee, but we have a nice big group of them. So they'll live in the fish room. I'll, the plants in this tank do have to grow out some. So that's their scape at the moment. I seem to have transferred some cyanobacteria down from the tank that I stole these plants from. So I've got that to look forward to. But I think we can have a nice little tank for these guys in here. Next to them we have the snickets. Schnecks. Bad lighting choices, but really can't get enough of these guys. <laughs> they are also fantastic. Um, I think I've got a male and female pair. As they're starting to put size on, they're definitely growing in different ways, and one does look plumper than the other. Both feeding equally well. But yeah, really happy with these guys. I think they're fantastic. Spent a good a good couple of weeks hiding from me, but now they definitely come out for food. They see me and have started to associate associate me with food, so they pop out and just look at that. The camera would focus. They've got really expressive faces, but the fins. Yeah. Love it, love it. More standard fare here, we've got the angels and the stair by Corys. Um, we've seen before some discus. Can't believe I just said it like that. Oh, some discus. Some amazing discus. Some more amazing discus. If you have joined me on my live stream, you might have heard the story of Punami. Uh, if you haven't, check out the release date of this video and go back to the previous live stream. Um, I don't know if I want to go in it again. I'll go into it again because it gives me the yip. But if you can see that fish there. That's the only hangover we've got from Punami, and that is so much better than it was. So to give you a quick recap, that grey pipe up there, that's a soil pipe coming from the downstairs bathroom. And long story short, it burst and exploded, and I just happened to be in here, so it exploded all over me. Which, even just saying it makes me go, hmm, oh yeah, I can smell and taste that again, disgusting. 
but what it also did was explode all over these tanks, mainly this tank. So, long story short, a lot of scrabbling around, getting fish out, moving fish, emptying tanks, water changing tanks, trailerizing tanks, but the fish in this tank took the brunt of it. So far, touch wood, we haven't actually lost a fish yet because of this, but all the fish in this tank, I'll see if I can cut in some footage I took near the time, they all look like they were suffering from discus plague. Um, they had eyes clouded over, fins all rotten, um, the slime coat all falling off, um, really, really clamped up, dark, looking like they were all going to die. I, I'd kind of written them off, and that's why we've not had a video in the last couple of weeks, because I'm so depressed. I've basically spent every day down here doing extra water changes, extra bacteria, um, adding to the water. Um, but yeah, they are coming round. So all those people who say discus are just the most weak, wimpiest fish that you've ever had, these guys have survived a big poop in the tank. Um, I didn't know what else to do other than just get them out of the tank, get them into fresh water and then continually do more and more fresh water changes. I didn't, what medicine do you buy for poop in the tank? So I've added extra bio balls, um, extra bacteria, but like I say, they are all there's one that's still showing a little bit of signs of ill health, but other than that, they're all doing fantastic. Um, so the power of water changes, people. That's what you want to take away from this, if anything. Um, so we've got discus in here, discus in here, discus down here as well. Um, I am a discus guy. I love my discus. We've been talking on the live stream of whether Mega Tank was going to hold discus or whether Mega Tank is going to hold Oscars. It might do both. Not together, obviously, but. We'll see. Um, more to come, more thinking on that, and no doubt more changing my mind coming on that one as well. Not mentioned yet, in this tank we also picked up some new fish from Fishman Aquatics, some neon blue gobies. Um, very hard to film, but very cool. Tiny, tiny, tiny little things that under lights are neon blue. Imagine where they got their name from. Um, but they look really cool, so we've got a pair of them. I don't know if it's a sex pair, it's just I have two of them uh, in this tank. And they're fascinating. They like to both live in the rocks, the wood, the glass, they're happy just showing off wherever. I'll see if I can get some pictures and cut that into them. But just a really interesting nano fish. It was 100% hand on heart and impulse buy. Um, <laughs> literally Callum went, look at these, these are cool. And I said, hmm, I agree, I'll have some. So we got a couple of them uh, living in this tank. Um, seem to be doing okay. I'm feeding them on flakes, uh, a little bit of live worms. Um, and yeah, they seem to be doing okay on this one. Loads of fry in my endler racks at the moment. Um, obviously we've got Humphrey down here and then an empty tank in the corner. So that's you up to speed on the fish room. We've got some big jobs coming though soon. So obviously I've got the heating sorted in this room. Next job is water changes, both how to stop flooding and then how to get rid of wastewater and use it effectively. Um, got a 3D printer recently, so we've got lots of little 3D printed cool gadgets and things to show you with that one. So, as ever, if you're into this kind of thing in general fishy stuff, then click the subscribe button. Join us on a Friday night, 9pm UK time. Um, we do a live stream, you can ask us any questions you want there. And it'd be nice to see you, and other than that, I'll bid you adieu. Bye!